Hey, Professor Hitch here, and today I want to talk to you about the Tolman model. What is it? How does it work? And how do we use it to our advantage in writing? Well, the first thing I want to say is what you're looking at here is the Tolman model. But before I do any explaining about what you're seeing on the page, I want to take a moment to give you background on Tolman and what exactly the Tolman model is supposed to be. Tolman is a British philosopher who thought that arguments were not being built right. Uh, they weren't being built at all. They were just these big blobs. And so Tolman's bright idea was, what if we had like a very rigorous structure for how we put together an argument? Wouldn't our arguments be so much stronger if they had parts that worked together that we could identify? And so what you're looking at here are the parts of the Tolman model, AKA the parts of the argument. So any good argument starts with a claim and that's what's over here on the left side of the screen, claim. A claim is something that's arguable, it's not fact, it's debatable, you're gonna have to prove it. What is a claim going to need then? It's gonna need evidence. Um, if you need to prove something, you'll prove it with evidence. What counts as evidence? Like everything, oh my gosh. Um, lots of things, not everything. Uh, statistics, um, first person accounts, even second person accounts sometimes, you can't get the first person, get the second. Uh, science, history, news articles, outside sources, um, far and wide, essentially. So that's, that's probably as much of the argument as you would just know by guessing, right? You know that there has to be a claim and there has to be evidence, but what about some of these other terms that we see on the page? Well, the first one I wanna start with is warrant. Underlying beliefs and assumptions that make the claim important, that connect the evidence and the claim together. What does a warrant look like? Well, let's say for just a moment that a dog were to wander into my office. Um, that would be super scary. I don't have a dog. <laughs> but let's say that you, the viewer, you were also here with me and you pointed out to me and you said, well, don't, don't be afraid, Professor Hitch, because it's a golden retriever and golden retrievers are very nice. There is a warrant in there in which you are assuming that you and I share the same underlying beliefs about golden retrievers. You haven't explained to me statistically why golden retrievers are nice. You've just said they are nice, they're golden retrievers. And you're expecting me to share that same belief with you. So when I reveal to you that as a child, I was viciously attacked by the world's angriest golden retriever, suddenly your argument doesn't hold water. Because even though you believe golden retrievers are nice, I have evidence that says otherwise. You're missing a strong warrant. Now, a qualifier narrows the scope of this. Um, you may say, in response to my new information, you may say, well, most golden retrievers are very friendly. The word most is a qualifier because it narrows the spectrum of the claim and the evidence. It makes it tighter. Um, you're protecting yourself uh, from the argument I'm trying to make against you that golden retrievers are mean vicious dogs, which is not true at all. Um, and then let's take a look over at the evidence side of things. So what's backing? Um, well, a lot of times just simply sharing evidence isn't going to be enough. A lot of times you'll have to explain the evidence. You'll have to explain why does this apply. So for example, if you were to come back at me and say, Professor Hitch, a recent study shows that nine out of every 10 dogs are friendly. I would say, I need backing from you. I need you to explain that to me. And so you would say, well, statistically speaking, that would mean that on the average, this dog that's now entered my office is, is probably friendly. That's probably not the best example of backing because it's sort of obvious nine out of 10, but um, file that away under backing means needs more explanation. 
grounds then is about why that evidence is reliable. It's, it's similar in some ways to backing, um, simply in that you're reinforcing the evidence, you're making it stronger. But instead of focusing on purely explaining, grounds focuses on why should I believe you? So if you were to say a recent study said nine out of 10 dogs are friendly, I would say what study? And you would want to provide me additional grounds about why this study you're citing is so reliable. Finally, rebuttal, bottom right corner, who would contest this evidence and why? To have truly bulletproof evidence, you have to think about all the assholes of the world, excuse my language, um, and how they're going to disagree with you. Because you know they are. If you've ever been on the internet, you know that there are assholes on the internet who will disagree with everything you say, even if it's right. So think about those people for just a moment and think about what you could say prematurely to make sure that they don't have anything to comment on your claim evidence combo. Um, so you might say something like, this recent study was backed by the FDA, that's your grounds, and this study is reinforced by an experience you had as a kid. As a kid, you were attacked by a dog, but you later, I don't know, trained that dog to be the friendliest dog ever, and so you've discovered that even angry dogs can be friendly. Uh, okay, so let's pull out for a moment. I realize I've messed up this example quite a bit. Claim. Golden retrievers are friendly. Evidence, because they're golden retrievers. The warrant? You and I share a belief that golden retrievers are friendly. Now, that's not true. As I've said, I had that terrible dog attack as a kid, and you apparently have been training golden retrievers ever since. You respond by telling me a qualifier. You say most dogs are friendly. Most golden retrievers are friendly. You provide backing of this by explaining further what exactly it means to be friendly. Most dogs don't bite. Most dogs, when you handle them properly, will handle you properly and not bite you. Uh, you provide me grounds, things that make this evidence reliable. You tell me that you get all your facts from the FDA. What the FDA has to do with dogs, I have no idea. And when, just about when, I'm ready to argue with you yet again, that is when you share your heartbreaking rebuttal slash story with me about how you trained mean dogs to be nice and you know firsthand that this FDA study is true. And then I say, well, great. You just tormented the heck out of me and now I definitely believe your claim slash evidence combo. That is the Tolman model. I know this was really complicated. I hope it helps a little bit. If it doesn't, please um, leave a message in the comment. Let me know what I can explain. I can always do another video. That's all for now. <laughs>